Hello and welcome to the Sarah Football Podcast with Coach Walsh. My name is Amy Strain. Happy to be here today. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. Well, this is um, a pleasure to see you again today. I got to see you yesterday at the, uh, I think it's the 34th annual Sarah Golf Classic at Hardin Park. Yeah, a lot of donations to the woods. Yep. Yeah, those, <laughs> those woods seem to like those golf balls over there. They but, do. Uh, and um, I guess I, um, you know, Rosie and I were out taking pictures and getting video reels and uh, we were able to stumble upon you at, um, I don't even know what hole that was. What was that? I don't know. But it was um, trying to forget about one it. of the funniest things I've ever seen. And I just wanted to bring it up because I don't think I will ever see that again in a lifetime. And that is, for our listeners, uh, Patrick tees up, <laughs> he hits the ball. You hear a crack, the ball comes back. You hear one of some, the force some beat saying, it's coming back at you. And all of us are ducking with our head, like hands over our heads, and you wind up like someone's throwing you the first pitch. That's right. <laughs> That's right. When I said that. It was so funny, though. I don't even, like, I literally yeah. got a chance to see how you think, because you were not going to let that ball <laughs> go near you. Well, it was a, uh, it was a very uh, low moment, embarrassing moment, because these damn trees just seem like to stick out in the wrong places. <laughs> And I hit a perfect drive that hit the tree right square in the, you know, right in the square of the, of the branch. And this thing's, this ball's coming right back at us. Completely. Okay, the, for, the, for the listeners, I think it traveled from the tee box minus 10 yards. <laughs> because it was coming back at us at about 93 miles an hour. It was okay? fierce. It was, it was fast. It was one of the fastest. I couldn't even find it, though. And the fact that you, like, literally got behind yes. the pitchers, or, like, was facing a pitch, it was incredible. Right. So in that, in that mind frame, I had a choice. I was like, okay, I can catch it, which would have been cool. But then I'm like, wait a sec, this thing's coming in at a trajectory where it's going to be like a baseball pitch. So I took the, the, I don't know, I took a hack at it. I missed it. I wish I would have hit it. If you hit it, that would have been. I would have said, well, I plan to do that. We would have spent the whole podcast on that. Like, But I do. I just have to say what was so funny, too, is that you had time to think about catching right. it or, well, all of us are just ducking and couldn't yeah. even find where the ball was. So, right. um, so I appreciate that, but th <laughs> this is where, as a golfer, which I'm not, but as a golfer, what you don't ever want to hear, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my I'm life. I'm sorry, it was the funniest course. thing I've ever seen, though. <laughs> Usually it's like, oh, my, that swing was so good. That putt was so good. Uh, when I play golf, the funniest thing I've ever seen on a golf course is a so yeah, So it a lot great. of my friends out there who, who listen, seen me play golf over the years would say the same It thing. was just the funniest thing. I mean, I just, I keep saying because we rolled up right at the perfect time that, I mean. Yes, like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, now there's stories to must have good to karma tell. to be able to watch that. Right. Well, depending on how you look, think of karma when it comes to golf. But go ahead. True, right. true. Uh, well, awesome. Well, thank you. Um, it was a great day, and I'm glad everybody was out there. It was a really, really fun tournament yesterday. Yeah. So a lot, of good, a lot of alumni showed up. It was, it, it's great to see all the. Padre alums, a lot of football players I haven't seen in years. Yes. You know, guys from our from our very first years, you know, 2002, 2003, and it's good to see those kids, right. who are now men. Well, I was with you with one conversation. Yeah. Oh, I'm the CEO of the DIR, of the, and we're like, we have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's doing <laughs> congratulations. a business Yeah, exactly. He lives in Seattle, and he's doing MREs, and which are meals ready to eat. And So, I, yeah, he was giving us all the... You know, all the acronyms, acronyms for everything. Yeah. So anyway. That's awesome. Well, it was a great day, and it was great to see your dad out there, too. So, um, But I wanted to uh, discuss the game against Central Catholic, mm -hmm. just give, like, a post report. Um, it was really intense. It was, um, you know, at one point, either anyone's game, and uh, I just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on how the players did and kind of what, what changed and, and made us, um, you know, mm -hmm. come out strong. Yeah, I think Kurt. it went exactly how I thought it was going to go based on how we practiced. Football is one of those games where you get what you earn and you get what you put into it. And as I mentioned before on the podcast, yes. like, it was not a good week. It was a bad week. Um, and our play reflected that. The, uh, you know, to the point where we were down 10-0 before we could blink. Right. You know, they, they went down, had a good kickoff return, scored a touchdown. First play, we threw a pick. Thankfully, the defense held a little bit there, and, and it was, uh, you know, held them to three on that one. So, but it, it, it's a, just a reflection of, of how we work. And we always talk about it's not necessarily the scoreboard. It's not necessarily where we end up. It's the process. It's the journey. And diving into that journey and living in that present, we did not do a good job of that post De La Salle for very many human reasons. I expected it. Everyone that talked to me was like, oh, man, letdown week. Like, oh, I bet you're worried about this one, trap game, all these people, all these experts. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm dealing with They're it. They're tired. I mean, they're, after those two games, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot. You know, at Folsom, 48 minutes. At De La Salle, 48 minutes. 
again, not only physical energy, but a ton of emotional energy. And then to expend that sort of emotional energy and then the recap of the emotional energy that just doesn't end right after the game. It's how you feel afterwards and coming down off momentum highs and, and these sort of things that really drifted into the week. And that cannot happen in the WCIL. It just cannot happen. You cannot get too high in the WCL, and you cannot get too low because mm -hmm. you, if you get too high, your ego will trip you, and you know MIDI comes in and beats you or whatever. Right. Um, and if you get too low, you're like, oh, I can't believe we lost that game. Then you feel so bad for yourself, you lose again. Right. I always say, don't, you know, don't lose to Bellarmine twice. You know, if you lose to him once, okay, but don't lose to him twice. We got to regroup. Got to get back on the horse. We got to get back to the journey. Get back to the process and that sort of stuff. And so I think that was a great lesson. And we always say around here, it's great learning lessons and wins than losses. Right. You know, absolutely. Lessons were great, and we're we're happy to to accept them, whether they're good or bad. But in this case, we learned lessons in a win. So all of that combined, again, showing resiliency again, resiliency in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it was 150 <clears throat> degrees everywhere in California that week, so it was hot even here. And and I, and I always say it's never hot <laughs> on the peninsula, but I will say that week was hot. It was. Um, and. It was hot in Modesto, and it was hot everywhere, and it was just, everyone was irritable and kind of, and then the flu ripped through the team, and guys were missing practices. One, one practice, I think it was Wednesday last week, four of our five starting linemen were out. Wow. So it was like we were practicing with. It's scary going into a big game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when they're coming back. Totally. And then throw on top of that, Central Catholic, which is a, a extremely proud program, which I told you. Mm -hmm. And they got great players like number 11 and number two. two. Gosh. They got a great coach who's been there forever. He's a legendary coach and doesn't like to lose 47 to 7 to St. Mary's of Stockton in their rivalry game. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, how am I thinking if I'm him? And I know, you know, because Coach Canapa's, you know, he's a renowned coach in California. Like, these guys are going to come to play. So all of that came together to a very, very tight game. And then – Ultimately, I think the things that we do and the process caught back up and yeah. the things that we are, the, the great players that we have, the coaches, and everyone stayed calm because we all anticipated this in a weird way. Right. Um, you know, overcame it and ended up having more points than Central Catholic. Yeah, it was great. It was a great game. And like you said, number two and number 11 were so fierce. Yes. Um, and then I noticed you had um, Jabari Mann and um, Jay Bay. They were defense only, which was new from the two previous games. So yes. There were a lot of, a yeah. lot of changes. But uh, what was your discussion with the coach afterward, Coach Kenepa? Just congratulations. Like, yeah. you know, I knew he goes, you know, I, we wanted to come here and give you a fight. And I'm like, yeah, you did. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's they clear did. That, that's clearly what you did and clearly what we expected. And we would expect nothing less from a, from a coach, you know, Roger Kenepa led team. So, right. and I, you know, Billy Hyla is one of their coaches. And, again, just, just from being here long enough, I guess, I've just, I got a chance to know all these people that let them play that uh, Billy was a lot involved in that. So just getting these coaches together and playing our friends, it was another one of those experiences. So we cool. have nothing but respect for those guys. Awesome. And then they go down south, yeah. right? They're playing yeah. St. John Bosco tomorrow. Is it Saturday? Or tonight. Or tonight, or, yeah. yeah we're, this is a Friday night podcast. But I, they might be playing tonight or tomorrow. My gosh. I mean, they're – and that is that is the we we like to brag about how tough our schedule is and yeah. it is, but I don't think there's anything I've never seen anything like this. St. Mary's, St. Francis, Sarah, Merced High School, which is on the rebound, one of our next level sites, St. John Bosco. Whoa, oh, yeah. that's the hardest schedule in the history of. That's high school incredible. Football. Well, we wish them we wish them yeah. luck, and uh, that'll be a good game to catch. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any other um, uh, reflections from the game? Do you want to talk about your game score? Any strategy? Well, I I think. We talk a lot about our goals and, and our reflection of, of our team is our goals. And the goals aren't perfect because it's data. And, and data doesn't ma uh, measure hard intensity, uh, all, the, all the things that make us human. Data doesn't, doesn't right. measure that. So, but our, our data, you know, we were uh, 8 of 12. You know, and that was, eh, you know, it was okay, yeah. right? It's, eh. And it just felt that way, that game. The offense was three for four, which is the highest that we've had. Great. Defense was one for four, which is the lowest that we've had for defense. Um, but it's, you know, nice yin and yang there. And I think really the outcome, just in a summary of our, our post meeting on, on Monday with the team was, you know, our grades are 68% or 69% collectively over the first three games. So I want to that, – that's a twofold thing. One, if you look at the grade of three and oh – you're like, oh, my gosh, here we go. Like, let's go. It's a right. rocket ship. You guys are the best. Like, uh-uh, hold on. Okay, hold on. 
Not so much because if you look at how we measure ourselves, we're at a 69%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that let's calm down here a little bit. It's week three. We're going into week four. We're playing our league rival in St. Francis. Like, there's a lot of things to happen right now. We right. know that, right? And I told the story of the of the New England Patriots that went 18 and one. You know, best 18 game team in the history of NFL. Not close. Not close. Offense, defense, special teams. Tom Brady, the whole deal. Unbelievable. They lost the Super Bowl. So they're 18 and one. We'll never think about them again. Right. Sadly. Maybe there's some records, like Tom Brady threw for 50 touchdowns, Randy Moss, like all these beautiful things, but, eh. Right. You know, good team. Just didn't get it done. 18-1? and one. <laughs> Now, if you lost the first game and won 18 in a row, it's the best team in the history of Absolutely, the NFL. Absolutely, yeah. So That's we, how you manipulate it, right? Well, you, just ha you have to think in reality here. And, and, it's, and, again, we're going back to winning. For, but for me, it's, it's just more measuring of the team. And right now, we're, like, right, right at a 70% now, or 68%. So the flip side of that is... Well, we are three now. So what else is happening that allowed us to overcome some of these things that we're not really good at right mm -hmm. now on the football field? And that's where the resiliency comes in and the heart and the, and the bonding and the love and all these other things that you cannot measure in a spreadsheet that I think have tilted the balance enough to get us to a spot where we're, we're you know, we're three and oh going into league. So, but there's no doubt about it. I mean, I know my friends down at St. Francis listen to this podcast <laughs> and I know because <laughs> they told me. Um, but they, you know, th this is game's been circled on many calendars. And, it, you know, I think if you went out to 2028 or 2038, the Sarah St. Francis oh, game yeah. probably circled on someone's calendar. Like <laughs> Exactly. I mean, that, that's so definitely the, the sought after. Everybody knows about this one. And, yep. and so we, we have a bye weekend this weekend, which is great. Players yeah. seem to need some rest. And then yep. you guys will hit it hard next week. And, um, and it's a Friday night game at St. Francis for the WCAL. That's correct. We, we give, I give this <clears throat> weekend off. I, mean, um, I know kids are uh, traveling and, and going to look at colleges. And it's a, it's a really good time to get away before... There's grind. no, there's no more bye weeks <laughs> before the grind. Right. This is it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've, we've had O and three preseasons. We've had very few three and O preseasons to be honest with you, but you know, we've had all the mix in the preseasons, but the only season that truly matters is the WCL. And that's every WCL coach is telling their kids you're O and O and let's go. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's going to be an exciting season, exciting season, excuse me. Um, and as we do have a bye, we don't have a game to prep for, right? I mean, I'm sure we could take two podcasts to talk about St. Francis, but we won't. Okay. <laughs> um, instead, we will. Um, we did a call out uh, last night um, for questions for the coach. That seemed to be really popular last season, and we kind of got into some really, you know, great topics that we wouldn't have covered mm -hmm. if you know we were just having the conversation. So, okay. Um, I think the first one I should go to would be um, back to your your golf game. Um, and this was, how did you shoot at Harding Park, and how long has Willie been out driving you? Okay. Because <laughs> Willie was there, too. That was really cool. So we had Padres yes. um, at a hole. You could uh, have them shoot one of because it was a um, yes. uh, scramble, so you could have them shoot for you. So Right. So uh, <clears throat> three under was our score, and it's the best score I've ever had if I was an individual. <laughs> So scramble, you right? Know, those are good. You take the best shot of the four. Everyone gets four shots at the best putt and all that stuff. Our team was three under. Nice. Did not keep personal score, thank God. <laughs> I, I think it probably would have started with a one. You know, I, I usually shoot in the nineties if I have a great day. I'm in the eighties, and then you know sometimes there's those days where it's the Playing score starts the with a course. one. <laughs> uh, you know, one oh eight, like things like that. So didn't keep score, but I felt great because our team was three under. That's nice. Okay, so we're under par. Uh, how long has Willie been out driving me? I would say since he's 12 years old. Wow. Um, and he's always been uniquely more accurate than me. So even when I was out driving him, I was, you know, two-something up there in the woods, and he's two-something out there in the middle of the fairway. Right, right. Yeah, so he um, he and his, his buddies, uh, Trevor and Ian, I think, was out there. They... Um, they were pumping them out there well over 300 yards. It was amazing. They yeah. were really, yeah. there was extreme precision there. There was some 300, 350-yard drives. Um, and you could you could pay the, the kids to use their drive, and all that money went to the, the golf team, which was cool. So I know they fundraised some money, and, and the alums, alums had a lot of fun with the kids. And oh, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Awesome. So it was good. Well, that was nice that they were out there. So you had three generations of Walsh out there That's yesterday. Right. That's good. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Um, one question that came in was um, about offers. Like, what does it mean to receive an offer from a college? Um, and, you know, is it a full ride? I mean, pe people were just kind of, it was a, a pretty long question sure, about that. Sure, sure. 
So offers at the Division One level are full ride scholarships. If you get an offer from uh, Stanford, it, it's it's implied that you've been offered a full ride scholarship. There's 85 of them in 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 college for each uh, for each D1 Division One program. Okay. Yes, and and at Division One AA, which would be Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, and I think they call it FCS Football Championship Subdivision. Mm-hmm. They, um, which is really, I mean, what, think about this. Like, why do we not have a championship division at the highest level? Which is what they're talking about. And they're going to expand the playoffs. Yeah. It's, eh. you know, I, I think college football is beautiful. I think it's absolutely, uh, there's nothing better than a fall day on a oh, college yeah. campus somewhere. But the NFL is the greatest thing of all time. And people will argue with me on this. And I'll say this. The reason why the NFL is the greatest thing of all time is because they smash their playoff system. It is it is unbelievable playoff system. Those thirteen games, I think it is now, are the best thirteen games to you know. It's the best, and then it ends with the Super Bowl, of right. course. College, on the flip side, takes this wonderful, beautiful product. You know, falls in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and all these beautiful games and all the colors, the Florida Swamp, and you look at all these things, and then the playoffs come and they destroy it with the bowl <laughs> system. Right. It's like the bowls are kind of confusing for. They're terrible. Yeah, they're terrible. I'm just gonna be honest. It's absolutely terrible. And there's a whole history behind these bowls that are very hard to unwind. Mm-hmm. But, they, sh- w- you know, my idea is to have four different Division One levels, basically. There's di- because I played Division One football. I, I did. I played at San Jose State. Um, so did Ricky Williams. <laughs> you know, he played at Texas, you know. Right. And, and so did, you know, Najee Harris, who's playing at, you know, played at Alabama. Like, there's different levels of Division One. Right. Okay. Back to the original question, though. 85 scholarships still the same. But San Jose State, if they played in the SEC, would probably not win very many games, if, if any, if I'm being fair to just reality. Right. Now, I think it would be really cool to have mm-hmm. Division One football, one, two, three, and four. And then you have four different championships, true championships of the four different divisions. Right. Right? So there could be a semifinal game in San Jose for the Division Four national championship. Whoever wins that plays – you know, at Tulane or whatever. Yeah. I think it'd be the coolest That'd thing be really ever. Neat, actually. Wouldn't it? Yeah. And then you go eight, 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 eight. There's 32 teams that have a chance to get winning a national championship. Right now, there's like three. Right. Every year, there's, let's say there's 120 Division One teams. There's three or four that have a chance of winning a national title. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know where I. I, I hope that was interesting. Yeah, that's I think that's interesting. Th- no, I mean it, it's, it's terrible. True. I, I mean, mean, it's. I just feel like college. They the just championship ruin. game is a, is a lot more exciting than a bowl game. Even I mean even yeah. yeah. I mean I know that like you said, steeped in tradition. Oftentimes there there's tradition to them, and you have you know fierce competition and, and camaraderie. And, but and nothing against the Bahamas. I've never been there. I'm sure it's a beautiful place. I'd li- actually like to go there someday. But the Bahamas Bowl. I mean, who wants to be the Bahamas Bowl champion right now? <laughs> No one's sitting in their offices going, all right, if we win the Bahama Bowl, it's going to be the best season of all time. Like, no one's doing that. Anyway. I haven't even heard of it, so I'm showing my lack of bowl knowledge. Right. right. We got Chick-fil-A Bowl, which is a big one. We got some other bowls. But anyway, so 65 scholarships at Division, uh, FCS, okay, which is Big Sky Conference. So the schools that we would know around here right. are Davis, Cal Poly, you know, schools okay. like that. They give 65 scholarships, but if you get a scholarship from them, it may or may not be a full scholarship. I see. Okay, Division Two has less. Division Three has none. Okay, so if I get offered to play at a Division Three school, they're asking me to be on the team, but there's no money. I see. Okay, I can also get an offer to play at Stanford, but as a walk-on, which is, you know, I got to go pay 80 grand to go to Stanford, but I'm playing football, I'm on the team. There's all sorts of different things, you know, in that. But traditionally, when someone says, I got an offer from San Diego State, it means that offer is for a full scholarship to play football at San Diego State, be wow. a student athlete there. Now We have a few of those. We do. Um, those are not binding because they're verbal offers. I see. Okay. In November, there's a signing date, which would bind that verbal offer to that student athlete. And then there's another signing date in February, which would bind that student athlete to an offer. Prior to that, it's just a verbal. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, those verbals from the college, they, they honor them most of the time. Um, sometimes things happen where a kid gets in trouble or maybe even an injury where, where the, the offer doesn't stand. And also, these colleges make way more offers than they have positions available. Okay, so we've had kids here, and and I won't name any names, but they got an offer from someone, 
they waited, and then someone else took that spot. So they no longer have that scholarship spot. Wow. And there are many that have multiple offers. There's a few on our team right now with, right, multiple Correct. verbal offers. And I would say those schools that they have offers from have offered <coughs> multiple kids for their position. I see. Right? So if we're going after a quarterback, which is the easiest position to talk about, we need one quarterback in this class, we being college. 2023, we need one quarterback. We might offer five kids, okay? And the first one that takes it is binding. Right. Okay? But they offer five guys because the, the, the kids on the other side, this is their only time really in this process where they have the, the chips, if you will, on some right. level. Um, and they're, you know, looking, they, they might have 15 offers or 20, and they might want to take their trips, and they might want to go to Oregon, then go to UCLA, and then go to Wake Forest and look at all these cool places. Um, but uh, the timeline, and I think we should do a, a full recruiting thing on another I like that because I have a bunch of questions off this question, but yeah. I don't want to take up too much time. Yeah, but. yeah. We should do a, like a recruiting only thing because really the timeline is sped up so much. And, you know, freshmen are getting offers and there's NIL money and people are freaked out. Everyone's panicking and it's, it's like, you know, this is still Daddy, football. Eddie. Just let's, <laughs> let's calm down. You know, maybe go to class. See if you like the school mm -hmm. in ninth grade. Like, well, you know, a lot of things change when you're from 15 to 18. A lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Things change daily around here. It's so transformational. Let's, I just wish people would, I mean, my message of, in, in our quick one is going to be the topic uh, when we do do a recruiting podcast is just slow down. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. Slow down. Let the kids be kids. Let them get into their high school program. Let them get to be, let them mature. Let them grow up. Slow down. If you are that rare talent like Jurion Dickey or someone that's just over the charts, amazing, Let's speed that one up a little bit. Right. Because you're different. Yeah, the sky's the limit there, right? Yeah, so. But no, that's good advice. I think that's good advice for, you know, at student athletes that are panicking about, will I play next? I mean, it's, it's good just to slow oh, down, yeah. Yeah. focus. Yeah. Well, while it feels like there's not time, there is time. Good answer. And we will get back to that uh, maybe late October, right before the signing day, so oh, that people actually sure. know what, yeah. what they're signing. Um, so this is about you. Um, did you always know you wanted to be a coach? Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, but only after I realized I wasn't going to be a pro athlete. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that, so, tried for that one first. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I, you know, growing up, I, my dream was to play Major League Baseball. I loved baseball, the greatest thing ever. And it just got to a point where I realized I wasn't going to be a Major League Baseball player. And that was right around junior year in college at San Jose State. And so you played both football and baseball? Yeah, at San, San Jose, Jose State. State. Yeah, correct. All four years? Well, three and a half because Incredible. what happened was we lost to Stanford in a football game. I'll never forget it. I think it was 21 to 2. Oof. Yeah. Steve Stenstrom was a quarterback. Stanford had a really good team. They were ranked nationally. They're so close proximity-wise, too. Yeah. And, and San Jose State, <laughs> you know, to our credit, the Spartans, we beat Stanford in the last 10 years. But when I was at when I was at uh, San Jose State, we did not beat them. And it was, it was a really, really rough game. You know, I, I think I, I probably had 10 carries for, like, I don't know, two yards or something. Oh, it was geez. just nasty. Right. And it, just, it, was a, it, was a, it was not a feel-good day. And I remember the Stanford band played, what's going on, hey? And I'm thinking, like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, and, and it was around that time, and I had just completed my junior year in baseball. I had a good year. I had, like, 390. I had a good season. But... I wasn't really exceptional at anything. You know, I didn't hit a lot of home runs. I hit a couple. Mm -hmm. You know, I, did, I stole some bases. I didn't steal 50. You know what I mean? I, I, I played good defense. I didn't play great defense. Like, I wasn't great at anything at the collegiate level, including football. And so then I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, well, I love sports, and it was after the Stanford game, and I'm watching the rerun on, on TV, and I'm half dead, half asleep, and I'm like, I love football so much. This was junior year right after that Stanford game. I want to coach it. And I want to be an NFL college coach. That's my dream. Nice. And then I just kind of manifested that whole plan. And that's, that's the main reason why I transferred to Texas. Because Augie Garrido was the baseball coach at Fullerton. Okay. And that junior year I had, I had a good year. So I was all conference. Um, so, yeah, th I'm sorry. This is my senior year when we played Stanford. Sorry. Because my junior year, I got all conference. And I, and I knew the coaches voted on it. So I knew Augie Garrido at least knew my name. Right. And he's a legendary head coach for Fullerton, won national titles, and now he's the head coach of Texas. Wow. 
So we're about to play the University of Washington, <laughs> and Corey Dillon was on that team, and he had 260 yards of rushing in the first half. <laughs> it was one of the worst games ever. Anyway, That's crazy. So, <laughs> and God bless Brent Brennan, who's at San Jose State right now, because we're winning games. We almost beat Auburn last week. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a new culture down there. There's a new building going, so I'm only talking about my history. But um, I called, and this was the time of voicemails. And I called and left a voicemail for Tommy Harmon, Augie Grito. I want to come to Texas. I'd love to be a part of your baseball program. But in the back of my mind, I was saying, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to infiltrate my way into the football program. Nice. Because I'm going to start my coaching thing. Because I'm going to be an, I'm going to be Nick Saban. I'm right. going to be a college coach. I'm going to be love an it. NFL. This is my plan. And um, everything went to plan. Okay. So I coached one year with the University of Texas as the Longhorns. Nice. And I'm we're on. I'm going to be the student. I'm going to be the graduate assistant. So I'm still a student. But John Makovic, the head coach, and he and I connected, and I, I said, hey, come watch me play some games. I'm a dirty, dusty guy. I dive around. Like, you know, I'm, I'm an overachiever type person, and I want to work for you. So that happened. And then I worked from Ricky Williams was a junior, one of my favorite human wow. beings on the planet. Ricky Williams is the <laughs> best. Cool. What an amazing guy. And um, he was a junior. This was right before he won the Heisman, which was the next year. But he had an amazing junior year. But we went 3-8, and eight, and we lost 66-3 to three to UCLA. We lost to Texas A&M, which you cannot do at Texas back in the day. We lost to OU in the Red River Shootout, one of the craziest, fastest games I've ever seen played. And at the end of the year, I was helping Coach Makovic pack up his boxes, and I was with him. <laughs> so then I'm like, yeah, hey, I'll go back to De La Salle, and I'll coach there, and it'll be easy. There's NFL players there, basically, colleges coming through, and right. it just didn't happen. And then... And then we, yeah, exactly. And then I'm here. So tell me, what, what did you study then? Like, what's your degree in? English. English, okay. Yeah, I was an English major. So, so as you started, did you have any other career choice prior to the epiphany of being a coach? Did Not you really. know what you wanted? Okay, you were just, Not really. English yeah. is a great major. I mean, yeah, you can apply and, it anywhere. And, and I wouldn't say I, I, I went to college to play sports, but I mean, it's okay if you do. I mean, that's your thing, right? Well, I mean, I, mean, I didn't major in baseball and football. I, I didn't, I, I was more like my. I was drawn more to that than I was to a, a specific career path sure. in, you know, aerodynamics, which I never would have done, but uh, physics <laughs> or something like I love physics. I'm going to do that. But I just never had that calling, really. Uh -huh. um, and so it was really interesting. And these people, you know, you watch it. Being a, a college athlete is a is a basically a pro. Um, it's a professional job, and particularly for those on scholarship. Your time is done. You have no time. I mean, a very, very minimal no time. I remember the first year after I was not a college athlete, I was just a student at Texas. It was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I got a 4.0 GPA. I knew my teachers. It was great. I had extra time. I was in study groups. It was the best ever. Wow. And that's why I, uh, it's remarkable the student athletes that, that do do that anyway. You know, they're in college. You're getting 4.0s. Right, or, and having the time or commitments. Right. So I obviously, in my college life, wasn't as focused as those humans. But, I, you know, when sports went away, I'm like, this is the best. I did this great business class at, at the University of Texas. I'll never forget it. Some of the, And I sat there just invigorated. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And now that business class has helped a lot of the things that we're doing at Next Level. So that, that was... Anyway, that was a big transition period. Anyway, long, long cool. way to answer. Well, no, that's great because it actually kicked out the second question, which was if you played college and uh, yeah. if you played sports at college. So we just killed two birds with one stone. There star. you go. Um, the next question is Under Armour. What does this mean? The logo is on all of our Padre gear. So we are an undeniable team. The Under Armour program, they have Nike has their Nike Elite high school programs. Under Armour has their undeniable high school programs. I don't know how many there are, but I think there's about 30 okay. in the country. And are they contracted for a particular amount of time, or we yeah, just are Under Armour forever? Not forever. I, I think it's a two, three-year cycle. Okay. Justin Ferdinand in our business office signs those deals. I see. And, and basically what it means is uh, we, we get perks. We get perks from Under Armour. We buy everything from Under Armour, so we, we obviously spend money with them, um, but they, like, they um, blanketed our stadium with sure. cool stuff. Um, yeah. when, when a player needs a, a, a pair of cleats because his blew out or someone can't afford it, like I can call Under Armour and get cleats for the kids. Nice. Um, you know, we, the, the coaches gear, uh, we get, we get a certain amount of money, which is a lot, um, for our coaches, player jackets, player cool. bags, 
you know, it's 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 a it's it's a thing for you know if we ever do get the opportunity to play on ESPN, you which we did, they yes. want their logo everywhere right. with prominent programs. So De La Salle is a Nike Elite program, and we're an Under Armour undeniable program. And um, I think a lot of that we got this deal long before we were, let's say, what we are now. Right. And I think it's because of Tom Brady, <laughs> who happens to be an un. un- under Armour athlete yes. or the Under Armour athlete, him and Steph Curry, right? Well, I have our ad pr- like proudly placed right there because right, we pulled okay. out of the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, sure, he's pretty good at football for this right? year. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good. Right, we like so, that connection. I don't think that hurt us, right. you know, because it wasn't awesome. like we were perennial state champs or or anything. And you know, obviously, Sarah High School is a prominent football, football program, program sure. prominent athlete. And we've gotten name. a lot of a lot of. I mean, recently we've had a lot of opportunities to showcase it too on. Like you said, on the national totally. stage. And totally. Uh, but long before, you know, football was this. I mean, we had 50 players in Major League Baseball. I mean, it's just right. we, our, our athletic uh, program, the student athletes that we produce are second to none, really, if you look back at things. I mean, Barry Bonds, Tom Brady, I mean, two of the best players that ever played David those sports. Bakhtiari. David Bakhtiari. now Lynn Swan. I mean, all these people. Jim Fergosi, John Robinson. Matt Dickerson. Matt Dickerson's playing for the Raiders. Right. I mean, there's just so there's many. A few more. There's a lot more. Hunter Bishop. I mean, you can go on yeah, and on with you, baseball. Oh, you can go on and on with baseball. That's <laughs> another forever. podcast. Yes. But, uh, you know, I think that the undeniable deal started with Brady, and then I'm, I'm, I'm proud that we were making them proud, you know, right. for almost taking a chance on us, if you Super will. Cool. And, and then, of course, we've we've had a, a nice kind of ten year uh, run of success, and I know the Under Armour people are are proud of how we represent their brand. That's great. That's great. It's really it's a pretty cool thing. I mean, you don't really hear about that much, you know, in the yeah. high school level. It's yeah, that's a cool. good question. Um, what is your pregame ritual? Oh man, mine. I, I well now I do yoga before the games to try to calm my mind and kind of produce some stillness in me because football's not still. Right. So trying to organize the chaos in my brain, I do some some kind of uh, breathing and and meditation to slow things down, so I can be in a good spot and help the kids and help them prepare. I don't eat much before the games. I'll just have, you know, a, a very little bite to eat, and then it's kickoff. Really, um, I'm not superstitious. I right. don't like I don't like getting into like okay, I need to wear this sock and sure. and this sort of stuff. I'm I am OCD about making sure I don't I have all my stuff because one time. I went to a game. It was a road game. I didn't have my shoes. I forgot my <laughs> shoes. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm borrowing someone's shoes. And I felt weird all night wearing someone else's yeah. shoes. So now I, if I am OCD about anything, it's like, okay, are my shoes in here, my socks, my game right. pants, my, my thing, you know. That's good. So, um, and my glasses. That If I don't have my glasses, I can't really see at night. That's a big problem. So at the end of the day, if I have my glasses and myself, we're, we're going to be fine. <laughs> good. <laughs> Good answer. Um, at one point, um, oh, I think this is uh, with, I guess this is going to be connected to the, um, well, I guess it could be De La Salle or, or Central Catholic. At, it's the question, and you can answer for both, I guess. At one point, the boys were losing, um, and, at, and what, what change was made in order um, for them to achieve a win? I don't think change is the right word. Okay. I, I think it was, there was no panic. I think it was, I think it was uh, in an understanding that while there's still time, there's still life. And let's not panic. Let's breathe our way through this. Mm-hmm. A lot of this is expected. Um, you know, when you play a De La Salle, Central Catholic, Folsom, even it's like, okay, well, these guys are really good at football. So if things don't go our way. Let's, let's have the peace of mind to understand that it's going to be a 48-minute game. And if that's what it's going to take, then that's what we're going to give. So instead of, instead of panicking or looking at the scoreboard one way or the other, because it can go the other way too. You're, you're up 21-0, this game's over. No, it's not. Dude. You lose 24-21. Right. We've had Easily. that happen. Yeah. I mean, we, it could turn on a dime. Turn on a total dime. And so just having the peace and, and the balance of understanding that in those games there was still time left, and while there's time left, there's hope, uh, was the ultimate feeling, I think, on the sideline. No one ever doubted anything. No one's yelling at each other not questioning what we've done, not questioning ourselves, questioning the coaches, play calling, any of that garbage. Right. None of that happened. So I think it was more, um, I don't think there's any, there's obviously plays, you know, we converted fourth downs against De La Salle. Yes. I mean, we drove the ball like, you know, after the first turnover against um, Central Catholic, it was clear that we were going to be moving the ball all day. Right. And so that helped. That was noticeable. That was noticeable. De, uh, the defense did have five three and outs while they didn't have the goals like they usually do. Um, they had we had five three and outs, which is one of our goals. So three plays, punt, right. short punt, touchdown. So 
just just kind of having the the clarity and peace of mind of knowing that um, you know it's time to panic when it's time to panic. <laughs> I think you'll let them know. <laughs> I'll let them know, like, when the clock is at 48 minutes and we're done. Right. And it's like, oh, we lost. Time but I think, pay. I mean, when you were talking about just, like, the feeling on the sidelines, I mean, this is, a, this is a team now that is really used to successful games, you know? So it's like having yeah. to temper that is probably, I mean, even just by having them remain calm and, and trust, yeah. trust in each other, I mean, that's still probably a virtue that you really have to instill just because they've had so much success. So. And, I, and I think even though we got totally blasted – uh, against uh, modern, modern day. day, yeah. I mean, that whole experience just on the it's the it's the last game played in the state of California when the clock ticks down. There's only two humans left, two human forms left, and that was Modern Day and and Sarah. Going through that for a lot of these guys who are still here um, has helped mm-hmm. them deal with stress. I Huge mean, I think it, I think it was a great uh, lesson in that. Uh, is that look? I, arguably, there's no bigger game, the Open Division Championship in the state of California. I mean, uh, there's, and who, I would say whoever wins that game can beat anyone in the country, which is why Modern Day was number one, right? So you're basically on the highest spotlight and the highest stage and the highest game in, in high school sports in California, in the nation too. So we've been through that. So I think maybe some of that experience, even for the coaches. Oh, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, my God, this is – and you're looking over there at an the NFL team, the modern-day NFL monarchs, <laughs> like, oh, my goodness, man, that is that is a real football team. And oh, weathering cool. the storm and showing our resiliency in the way we did that night obviously got smashed. Um, but We got points on the board. But coming out of it with uh, – At least it, know, wasn't a, it wasn't with, a shutout, right? It was, it was not a shutout. <laughs> not enough points, yeah. but it was – Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, I just have two more questions. Okay. I know I'm taking a lot of time, but yeah. um, I really like this question. Um, as a coach, what is your greatest strength? And conversely, what is your greatest weakness? I think my greatest strength as I've gotten older is attraction and attracting wonderful human beings that are better than me. I think that's my greatest strength. That's great. And also knowing over a 22 year period, if I find those people, get out of the way. <laughs> Right. Which is my biggest weakness. <laughs> I like it. You blended that one nicely. Yeah, because, it, the, and I was talking to some of the guys yesterday that knew me when I was 26 as the head coach, not 47. Must be weird, yeah. Yeah, and, and, but they've seen me change over the years. One of the guys even mentioned it, like, coach, man, you've changed so much. <laughs> like, and, and, the, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to do an a alumni roast, and I, I want to hear these stories. Like, I can't even imagine what I was saying when I was 27. That would be really funny. It'd I mean, just really to, I mean, funny. Cause they're, I mean, when your coach is saying it with such passion, whatever yeah. you're saying, they remember. So Yeah, it's, and, there, and I've said on this podcast before, there's things that I said I wish I could take back because these, they're, all, they're kids. They always will be kids, and I love these guys. And my own ego or my own weaknesses got involved in some of the things that I said to a 16, 17-year-old kid that I really wish I could take back. Because at the end of the day, I love them all. I love them all the same. And I, many coaches have felt that before. And I think back on the things that I'm, I most regret. It's not going to be like, oh, I should have not gone for two or we right. should have thrown the ball. It's going to be, man, I, I could have dealt with that situation better. I could have dealt with that human better. And um, we, we were kind of sharing that. So getting back to the weaknesses part, I think just my own ego um, interjecting in times when, when I should just be stepping back and giving the reins is, would be my biggest weakness that I'm constantly working on. That's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's how to improve, right? It's yeah. Constant, <laughs> you know, yeah. reflection and, and uh, focus. But, um, okay, well, last question kind of um, goes into one that we kind of talked about before, but... Um, you have been so successful in football. Have you ever thought about coaching another sport? That's really a good question. It's a great question. I first of all, I would get a divorce. <laughs> well, if my wife that aside, I guess if I'm wise. like, hey, I'm going to go coach baseball. <laughs> like, no, you're done. You're, uh, it's, I give you football. Twenty-two years, we're done. Yeah, I give you football. Um, so time-wise, uh, it would not work with my family. Of course, but um, I would uh, to answer that question directly. I would say no. Um, because football is a year-round passion. Um, you know, in January, February, March, we're studying. Still working, Next level is yeah. going on with flag. I mean, it's just continue to pe- perpetuate the game and, and make it as big as possible and have as many souls that, that can be a part of it and gravitate to the game, whether it's through flag or tackle football. 
or whatever and just recreating that wonderful environment that I see lives change. Right. Is like clearly a passion of mine and I do not think in all fairness I've never done it really. I, I did coach at De La Salle baseball. Um, it's not the same. And I just don't think I would have the patience to uh, or, or I don't think those sports particularly even in my own life had the that deep granular impact on my soul. Although baseball I liked better which is an interesting thing. Interesting. Maybe because I didn't like getting hit. I mean, maybe once a game you hit with a ball or <laughs> yeah, something. Right. But like getting hit over time actually becomes, um, Here we go. Yeah, yeah, your body can only take so much, right? Yeah, particularly with mine. Like I'm not a very big human, but, you know, taking on hits from Ink Aliaga, who was a middle linebacker who played in the NFL at the University of Washington. Oh. You got to pick up an A-gap blitz with him running full speed in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it was like a nightmare Baseball's a little better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Well, so, awesome. That's a great yeah. answer. Um, and I guess I should say, I mean, I, you were saying next level because that goes in your off season is your on season with next level. Yeah. And I know um, There's no my son and yeah. your son are on the same, uh, both teams, but um, yeah. I'm so glad you, I mean, folks get on the roster because the rosters are filling up for next level totally. as we speak for the January um, season. So I yeah. just want to plug that because well, um, yeah, because I almost forgot to do that myself. Yes, you did. Um, thank you for helping me out there. Um, anyway, well, thank you so much for your time. Um, you're yeah. always so interesting. And like I said, we could have gone into a full podcast with any one of these subjects. So we do appreciate your time. Yeah. Uh, WCAL kickoff is going to be on, uh, what's that, September 24th? Is that right? No. Whatever Friday, Whatever that Friday a week is. from today. Yeah. 23rd, I was close. Yeah. Um, at St. Francis. So that's going to yeah. be a good game. And we'll talk about that next week. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the question part. And for the people that listen, all six of them, I think. There's a few 600. more than that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know the questions beforehand, so it's fun for me to, to whatever answer comes out. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Blink. It's a great book. And it's a great, it's if anyone, shelf. it's and it's basically first impression. Your first thing you think, the first thing you say is the truth. And you can be like, all right, here's how I feel about this person. I'm gonna, and I, I call it blinking out now. You blink it out, you have an impression of that person. And then you spend a month trying to figure it out and usually come back to the fact that your first impression was right. Um, so having the opportunity to blink my way through these answers yeah. is, is getting to the truth of like how I feel about things. So if people like it, let's keep doing it. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate it. And I do think that, um, that, uh, Tom Sullivan mandates uh, the junior English students oh, to really? read Blink. Yeah. Brilliant. Because that's how I got it. That's my second great book that I've gotten from that class, actually. Yeah, so. good. Anyway, well, go Padres. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.